She's passionate about helping you become the best mama you can be and is pulling back the curtain on expert advice for every area of our lives, from eating for wellness, the best advice for littles, fashion and style, and everything in between. Get ready to get real. This is Not Your Mama's Podcast with your host, Christina Franci. Welcome back to another episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. I am your host, Christina Franci, and today we have the gorgeous, amazing goddess, <laughs> goddess in the flesh, Hollywood Hills wife. <laughs> She is the author of Rich Charming Sexy Goddess, the blueprint of I love it. The blueprint of getting everything you want from a man. And I have summoned her today to help us awaken our seductive goddess from within. Hollywood Hills wife, welcome to the podcast. It's such an honor to have you on. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So tell me more about your journey and when did you understand your worth as a goddess and your power? You know what? It it became very serious to me after I had my niece, Michaela, which is six years. She's six years old now and people can't even understand how we're so connected you would think that she's my own child and she follows every little move that i do she follows me she looks up to me and then i realized that the only way for me to make sure that she has her best life and she lives her absolute best life is even if i'm not here i want to leave something for her and then i was like you know what she is my why and I love her so much and I just feel like we don't emphasize, we don't pay attention enough to how important just being aligned with someone, being in a relationship with someone, how it can destroy or elevate your life. hundred percent. I got chills with that. (laughs) We do not pay attention in that point you know we teach women to be very successful but yet we don't understand that okay in addition to being successful you need to learn how to vet so much women do not know how to vet which is why i came with came up with my book rich charming sexy goddess which i teach you detailed step by step i mean anyone can understand it how to vet because i just feel like it just we just don't understand it. So Michaela is the reason why. And I really realized how, what I, the knowledge that I know is something so special. It was when I graduated college. Mm -hmm. And also it was during my college years, like the guys that I would date, never even looked the guys that were in college but for some reason i was always that girl that was dating a guy with the bentley and all these cool cars and my friends would be eating ramen noodles where well i was like traveling every summer break like i was traveling to die before you know it was popular like before yeah. everyone and i was like wow you know i just thought what i was you know, normal. But then I really think about it, Christina, like I've been studying this since I was 15 years old, like Mm -hmm. relationships and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that was because when my mother divorced, she's also my wife too. When my mother divorced at 15 years old, I love my dad. So my mom, I think my mom is the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Mm -hmm. So when my mom divorced, I was like, okay, you know what? It's time for you to date a man that's rich. Like, I'm tired of living. (laughs) This is what I told my mom. I told my mom this. I'm like, mommy, you are beautiful. You are hot. You have an amazing body. You've had, you know, three kids. It's okay. You you divorced dad. Now it's your time to live. Okay. Now it's your time to live. Of course, I did not stay in a child's place. I was a 15-year-old child telling my mom what she needs to do with herself. But return you know that is well you know (laughs) and but i was reading all these books trying to give my mom knowledge but eventually she came around to it but 
was trying to teach her because I wanted her to be my meal ticket so we can live in a nice area. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, it didn't work out at the time. But in trying to teach her, I, I was teaching myself about, mm -hmm. you know, men and relationships. So I, I had that knowledge. So in addition to learning social studies, I was learning about relationships, but I just never thought it was, it didn't really mean it was a sign of teaching until I went to college. Yeah, no, that's a beautiful why. And, you know, I love to hear your journey. So what is a rich, charming, sexy goddess? And what turns an ordinary woman into a goddess? Okay, so the so what turns an ordinary woman to her goddess is when she takes the time to invest in herself and she realizes her power that's from within. Mm -hmm. You take time to really invest in yourself because you have to understand that society puts so many insecurities on us every single day. You are bombarded that you're too fat, you're too skinny you need to do something to fight to get all those horrible thoughts out of your mind because every time you this is why i, I don't even watch tv yeah this, um when you, every time you watch tv every time you go on instagram you're just bombarded with you're not good enough uh, uh you know because so society wants you to need them they want, want you to feel powerful you truly are and yeah. What turns a woman, a regular woman who doesn't understand her power, brings her to the next level is when a woman truly understands her power. When you understand your power, when you're not in the world and you're kind, you know, wanting to be liked by people and you walk to the beat of your own drum, like that is when you truly live. Yeah. That is when you truly live. Like, and, and um, until then, like you're just you're just flew by, you yeah. are just floating by through life, and that's what brings that's what propels you. And then being charismatic, being charismatic, it just takes you being comfortable in your own skin, and it takes experience, it takes life, and it also takes a commitment every single day. You know, in the beginning, I was doing this. I didn't like come out my mom's stomach like this. <laughs> you know, it's something that I have to constantly work at every single day. Mm -hmm. And also when you become a goddess, sometimes it's like you get around other women and sometimes you, are, you know, women are either going to be attracted to you or repelled by it. So yeah. Yeah. you have to be okay with yeah. people being repelled yeah. by you. You'll understand that they weren't really for you anyway. Yeah. You know, and that's what I love about you. You always have been this woman that lives her true authentic self, you know, from the moment yeah. I've met you, you know, and you, yeah. you really are always evolving and changing and just always becoming the better person that you were yesterday. And, and you can really see that. And Aww, your book, Rich, <laughs> your book rich charming sexy goddess was such a pleasure to read i felt like i was talking to one of my girlfriends i had laughable moments to myself and i also had thinkable like aha uh -huh moments and kind of going back to what you were talking about with um you know the goddess and, and you have to work on it and an ordinary woman turning into a goddess. I do want to point out some of your affirmations that you had in this book, because I do think it's extremely important uh, for women to say affirmations to themselves, to get them to that goddess level, you know, yes. and a few of them that stood out to me that I thought were really amazing were I am the air that he needs to breathe because, yes. you know, because we do, yes. we control like the head of the man sometimes and men need us and, and like yes. men too, you know, like it's, it's a give and take relationship, but I, I liked that one. Cause I had never heard of that one before and I am more than enough. Yes. 
And this one kind of made me smile too, because I am a son. I have two sons, excuse me. I'm a, I'm a mom boy. And somebody's son is waiting to worship the ground I walk on. You know, I, yes, just hope that's, that, I really mean that one. I just hope one day that my son, you know, both of my sons can find women that are strong and powerful and yet respecting of them as well. But um, you know, and they have like great courtship and, and everything like that. And, you know, men love to know what turns me on and makes me happy. Yes. Um, sometimes I feel like as women, we don't speak up of what we want, you know, and sometimes yeah. even like in the bedroom or things like that. Do you, what, what can you say to expand on that? How do you help a woman or, like voice their opinion more because sometimes we can be scared to to do that like we have to stay no matter what the minute that you walk into a room people are already judging you no matter what you could you could look like someone's ex-girlfriend you could look like a past co-worker that they hated people are always going to judge you no matter what whether you have on all black or I'm green people are constantly judging you so because people are going to judge you anyway you might as well just say what's on your mind anyway For the most part but you know you should have tact know when to you know it's time to to listen and time to talk and in terms of of your relationships and like in the bedroom I'm very vocal about what I want in the bedroom because I realized that, you know, when you're dating a man, like we put too much pressure on a man for him to know what we want because you have to understand he's just doing what he probably saw on a movie or what his yeah. ex girlfriend liked, but on the porn it, sites. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, he doesn't really know like you can't go in and the first time you're having sex with him and you can't expect him to know like okay favorite position and you have to just it, it, you know like i just feel like the risk is the reward is way more than the mm -hmm. risk like you may come you know you may not feel comfortable but the more you do it and i just think that like that part of a relationship you have to make it fun because in addition to you telling him what he likes, he can tell you what you like. And then every time when you guys have sex, or look, it's an enjoyable moment. It's, it's enjoyable to where it was meant to be so enjoyable because you know that he's going out of his way to please and you're doing vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no, communication that's Communication is everything. Yeah, Especially when it comes to sex. And so where do you think women fail at love and dating? I know we have, um, there's that new Netflix series out, The Tindler Swindler, which if you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it. Um, I suggest that you go watch it. But where did these women fail? Um, and how can they not get swindled into basically paying for a man's lavish lifestyle? Number one, a lot of women, we have this fairy tale thinking that love is all you need, which that couldn't be far from the truth. Mm -hmm. We have to understand with men, men are very logical. So what they do, they take time to really think about emotion. We sometimes, you know, we really want that Prince Charming. We really want to be in a relationship. And a lot of times in the beginning phases, we take logic out of it. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. Simon was able to do it. First, he gave these women um, pro proposition dates within 24 hours. So it was like, boom, before logic could, could kick in. He was yeah. like, okay, let's, let's go on a date um, on my jet. So it's like before you had the time to really think about it, you're like, you know, because as a part of you that's like, I don't know, but did you want it to be true? Like maybe, you know? Exactly. Another thing we have to understand that number two, we're not, um, what do they call it? You're not an uh, exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. Not exception to the rule. Like, we have to understand like, you know, 
yes, we're, you know, we are different, but just know that, okay, something happens to a majority of people, it might just happen to you. So they messed up by number one, not allowing time to think logically, not making yourself so ready available. You know, I advise women, when you meet a man, do not go out with him right away. Allow logic to kick in. Take your time to vet, 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 vet. If you do all the steps that I say in my book, it's gonna take you at least, you know, more than a day. You know, take the time, vet him, vet everything, all the information that he, that he's giving to you. And also, I teach ladies that it's so important when you meet a man is to listen. Me, mm-hmm. I'm very talkative. You know, I can <laughs> talk to you to death, Christina. <laughs> but when I'm on my when I'm on a date, I'm listening. Yeah. I'm listening. I'm there to look beautiful. So admire my beautiful dress and good looks. And <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. And I'm verifying from what he told me yesterday compared to what he told me the day before yesterday. So it's number one, vet, 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 vet. Do not rush. Do not, you know, you have to verify thing something man tells you they did not have time to really just vet look up you know it was um i think i'm not trying to give it away but like it was one instance where priscilla one of her friends she was telling friends about it and her friend was like you know what let me look this person up and i was thinking to myself your friend shouldn't have to do that you should be one looking some up yeah watching information to see if it makes sense you know but she yeah. has great friends that's why they decide to do it so that 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 yeah and that brings me Love. to another point in your book when i was reading the vetting process of your book it was like oh yeah like people should look at these things and i thought it would be a great thing to share like okay linkedin obviously mm-hmm. and then what I other thought was good, like if they claim to be like a federal employee, look at federalpay.org. You know, I thought that that was, yes. I was like, oh, I never thought about that. Um, and it's and free. Have, like, it's free. Yeah. And then you have like, you know, obviously your social media accounts to look at, you know, you have your Google, DuckDuckGo. And then um, another one was good was beenverified.com. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. I was like, oh no. And then I love how you put in like the calculator.net, just like a like a little handy dandy tool that a woman can use to determine how much money he makes per year. <laughs> yes, because some a lot of times men will say that they make this amount of money because if you if 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 these women really did break them, right? And if this man is telling you he's a billionaire, to be a billionaire. You have to have a certain amount of money that comes in every single month, the billionaire. So a billionaire is not going to ask you, oh, I need $20,000. Like he, oh, he, no. makes that in, <laughs> he makes that in a few days. So like, no, you know, and he's going to have money on reserves, you know, to have a billion dollars, you have to have tons of assets that you'll be, you'll be able to pull out of immediately, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I just think that they, would have done their research and, you know, and I did it with my husband. I'm like, okay, if you make this about a money, okay, this is how much you're making a week and a month, but you know, that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I feel like women can fall in love so easily with anybody, you know? So that's why we have to be cautious and protect our hearts and protect our minds and not get like wrapped up in like that fairy tale thing, because love doesn't matter if you're like poor or rich, you know, it's, it's how you feel. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes we just, we need to be picky and choose like what our standards are, you know? Yes. And yes. And kind of going back to what you're saying about men thinking with logic, like my total saying is like, so men, you know, their like private parts are straight, you know, they're outward, they're (laughs) outwardly thinking they're one directional, you know, like yeah. they're very straightforward. They can kind of only think at like one thing at a time. Not that I'm trying to like 
you know, dis men or anything. I love men, but you know, they're kind of like one directional and they're more outward thinking and women are, you know, insides are kind of, you know, they're, um, how do I want to say it? They're like diverse, you know, they're two dimensional, Yeah, you know, so we can be, you know, thinking about other things and multitasking more and like, we're more internal, you know, and, um, I always just found that like very interesting based on like the anatomy of like the men and women and like, kind of like how it can reflect how we think, you know, about things it's in true. life. And, and we also like, we also think the best of people Like we want to think the best of people just naturally that nurturing of part, course. like we want to think the best of, and sometimes that clouds our judgment. You know? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can get caught up in like the minutia of like everything going on around us, what other people's opinions are, like what you had mentioned earlier, like someone's always going to have an opinion. They're always going to be judging and you just kind of got to like brush off your shoulders and know your worth and know that like you are a goddess and yeah, no one is like you and you're not everyone's cup of tea and you have to be okay with that. You have to have a backbone. Yes. And, you know, I will, I want to know, like, what was your, um, how did you come up with your like goddess commandments, you know? And like, why are they so important for us to, to, you know, replicate? Okay. Because basically with this book, it was, I had to do a lot of, I don't even, when I look back at it, I'm like, dude, it was the universe seriously that needed me to put this information out there. Mm -hmm. I had to like, one thing I've always done, because like I always look back at every part of my life, every relationship I've ever had, when things are going, you know, really well. And I'm always like, thing that you really like about me? What is one thing that makes me, every relationship, and I suggest that you do this with your friends, you do this with your husband, you say, hey, where's one thing about me that you really, really love? Well, he shouldn't just list only one thing, but yeah. you, you just want to be nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what is one thing that, so I really had to break down, like, okay, like, everything that I've been told, like, and I've been doing this for a very long time, and I do that because, you know, you because I'm always trying to learn to be better. So, you know, let's say you meet someone and says, you know, what, I think you're very optimistic, but you're not good in this area. You know, I would think about it like, hmm, is this person, is there, is, is there some, something that they're saying? Is it valid? Because I'm always trying to move to the next level. And I really had to think about my life like I had to like really like isolate myself and think mm -hmm. about my life and think about okay what are the standards that I have in the thoughts and beliefs that has got me to where I am because like honestly like everything catapulted like during like um when things really started moving really fast and I had no like it was just crazy good I think during COVID during COVID, while the world was like falling apart for some reason, like I was so calm. Like, everything was just like opening up for me. Like I was spending more and more and more and more time figuring out myself, learning about myself, spending more time around my niece mm -hmm. and just learning, okay, like why is it that I'm able to get at a certain place and other people aren't. It's because I have these sets of standards that I am very stubborn on. Like, And I feel like every woman should have some non-negotiables that they believe that they're like, you know what, I love you, but these are my standards. And mm -hmm. this compromising these standards is going to cost me my peace. Compromising on these standards is not going to help me reach my goals. Yes. So I thought about, okay, how did I get to where I am? It's because I have these set beliefs that are within me that I did not go and ask anyone for permission. Yes. These are my set standards worked from because I've had these set standards, I've been able to get the things 
that I want, whatever it may be, like, this is why. And I just feel like if ladies, you know, and, and I'm always thinking of ways, how can I easily put out information that is quick, anyone can understand. So I mm-hmm. really had to take time and look within myself and like break it down and how to make it as simple as possible. Because the book was originally 300 pages. And I'm like, okay, this is too much. I need to condense <laughs> it. And just break it down so anyone can take just bits and pieces and apply it to themselves and still be great. So those are the commandments that I used for myself, you know, mm-hmm. and I learned about more about seduction, more about being charming. And these are the things. So I'm like, and, and I didn't hold back anything because this is going to be a five book series because this is just, it was, it was a lot of work. Yeah. No, you really but, don't um, hold back in the book. I mean, it really, yeah, was, I, I mean, you really speak the truth and you lay it out and you're very blunt. And like I said, when reading it, I felt like, you know, I was like talking to one of my girlfriends and having a laugh, like, you know, and, and it's a quick, easy read. And yeah, you were talking to me. Exactly. That's how it, it literally feels like I was talking to you. <laughs> um, okay. So I do have four, uh, four questions that I do ask all of my guests at the end of each interview. So my first question is, and I, you probably already answered it, but just again, is who and what inspires you? Um, my Michaela, Michaela inspires me so much. Like the connection I have with her is like my brother doesn't even understand. She calls me now. She's six years old. Calls me from my iPad every. Um, she, and she knows what time to call me. She knows she calls me like she actually she just called me. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, universe, don't let the phone ring. But she, I speak to her every single day. She is my wife. She is the reason why I go so hard because. My niece will not date a brokey, not on my watch. <laughs> she, will not date, she will love herself too much and she will see the game eyes in the manipulation from a mile away. And, you know, and, and I do this by not forcing it on her, but she's so smart and just teaching her about even at six years old, I teach her about self love. I tell her how beautiful she is and I just instill everything that was instilled in me plus more. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, our parents, they do the best that they can, you know? Yeah, they do. We're, we're learning as we go. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, they knew. So, you know, you know, we shouldn't put pre- too much pressure on our parents. All we can do is be better for the next generation. So I know that, you know, even my brother, the perfect parent, but like, I know with me, like she is my why. And now I did. Oh, I have to tell you. Right now, as we speak, my mother, right, mm-hmm. she didn't listen to me when I was a kid, you know, because, you know, I was stepping out of my out of my, a child's place. But as we speak right now, my mom, she is in Paris. She's been in Paris since the summer with her boyfriend, wow. and she's living her best life. Now they're talking about getting married and yada, yada. And oh, that's so wonderful. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, and, 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 and my mom just proves that no matter how long you've been going the wrong direction it's never too late it's never too late and although my mom she's almost 60 she she looks like she's in her 30s it's never too late finally taking it in and another another thing that um made me write the book is because a lot of times my problem is that when i find something that works i'm like I beat my friends over the head with it. <laughs> it's to the point where it's like, I don't even want to hear it because I'm just too much. So I'm like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to put it somewhere. So when you're ready, yeah, you can take it on. Perfect. And then like, that's what my mom did. And it all clicked. That's what she did. Now at this point, she was finally ready. So the teacher appeared. Now at her age, she ready for me to talk to her for everything I've learned and the minute she like finally paid attention to me and and you know she saw how you know me and hubby how me and white chocolate how we get along and (laughs) she's like you know I want that you know I want that so now finally 
now I don't even know when she's coming back. She's supposed to be coming back in April, but I don't I don't think she's coming. Back. Oh wow. Well that's good for your mom. That sounds like amazing. I want to be doing that. Um okay, yeah. so, <laughs> so my second question is what is something you wished you knew when you were younger? One thing I wish when I was younger was I wish that college wasn't so beat down on me because as a child uh, it was like oh, you're not going to be successful unless you go to college yeah. like and then yeah. when you really look up the people who the most successful people in the world out of college i truly feel like they have not created a curriculum in college for entrepreneur that teach you how to be an entrepreneur college does not teach you how to be an independent thinker so I wish that I would have taken mom, which naturally I'm very rebellious to mm-hmm. the rules. So like, I wish I would have taken more time, which I did, you know, I spent a lot of time traveling. It was times where I would miss days from school because I was, traveling, you know, yeah. but it was up to me. I would place into my future kids, I'm going to place more importance in self-love yeah. finding really taking time finding what you genuinely love to do don't do what you feel at the moment is is you know making money this is why i feel like a lot of unqualified people go into the medical world is because you know that's something that makes money find out what you genuinely love to do and yeah. be the best at it totally. whatever it is just be the find out that you really love it find out okay how am i going to take this idea that i love to do how am i going to turn that into money yeah. if i could do it all yeah. over again when i'm gonna Michaela, i'm trying to foster what do you love to do all right let's start your first business learn how to make money off of it because you graduate from college and still be broke sadly totally. a lot of people from you know after covid learned that you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's great advice. Um, and then what's an essential part of your daily routine? Manifestations. Yeah. Manifest like like you have to have something that's combating all the negative thoughts from your family, from your friends, from your spouse, from the world. You have to, and you know, sometimes I have to remind myself, you know, and that looks like, I swear, like when, when me and my husband, when we first, um, started living together, he thought I was crazy because I'm constantly talking to myself. And he's like, are you talking to me? I'm like, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. Constantly <laughs> manifest, you know? And it's at points when I stop manifesting, like, because sometimes I get comfortable. I'm like, okay, I got this. I got this. I don't need to keep manifesting. And then I'm like, wait, wait a second. <laughs> No, I need to go. I need to constantly, constantly be putting out that good, positive energy. I think that sometimes we get into negative slumps Mm -hmm. and we stop believing in our power and we need to automatically shake it off. Manifesting is so important to me. It is so important. And believing in my self-worth, believing that everything that I have is already within me. It really is. We all have that power. We just need to just pull it out. You know, it's harder for some than most to pull it out. But if we work hard and we can pull it right out and be the best versions of ourselves. Yeah, no, I love that. That's such great advice and a great reminder for the audience listening. And then, so my last question to you is the best advice you've ever received. The (laughs) (laughs) best, okay. (laughs) My father. You, you know, I know you might not like this analogy, but like my father always told me at 15 years old, he was like, whatever you do in life, be the best at it. He's like, even if <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm apologizing now. He's like, even if you're going to be a drug dealer, even though. <laughs> yeah, no, I get I've it. I've never done that. I've be never the best one on that. the block. <laughs> be the best one. And he told me that when I was. 15 years old because you know we never had that birds and bees conversation Mm -hmm. he was like listen if you ever come back pregnant or if you were to ever sell certain things i will never ever forgive you for one but if you are going to 
you know, sell stuff, be the best at it and don't get caught. Like that's, that's the kind of man my father was. My father was like, if you're going to do that kind of lifestyle, be the best. Oh my God. Well, yes, that was my father. So he says, and he mentioned in birds and bees. So I, it's, it, you know, it was weird. I was like, oh, so you would be okay if I was, if I was doing that, like he'd be like, just being the best at it, whatever you do in life, be the best at it you know and it, that part stuck with me like okay whatever in life be the best at it and i think and it's true it's like i think the hardest part christina and, and, and this is what i love with you every time i see you you're always trying something new you're doing something new you know and i love that about you so much and i think as women we need to do that we need to constantly try to find what there's some things that we love to do, you know, like, yeah, I love painting. I love, you know, and how can we be the best at it? Like to totally. the point that people come to us to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. And that part, no matter how messed up it was, that part stuck with me. He was like, whatever you do in life, be the best at it to the point where you can do it in your sleep. Yeah, like, that's what that that's like the best advice that I've ever is it, really, is, it is, is good. It is, I think it's great advice. I mean, we have to know that like, if there's something we're passionate about it, just dive deep, you know, and be the best yeah. person that you could be. And, and if there are hiccups, like that's okay. You're just learning to be the best person that you can be at it. You know, failure is not real, really failure. It's just learning and being better at your craft and adjusting what you need to do. Well, Hollywood Hills wife. This has been an amazing interview. Thank you so much for being on. I will have her book linked below rich, charming, sexy goddess, the blueprint to getting everything you want from a man. I highly suggest it. It's a great read. Do you have any last words before we say bye? Uh, feel free. If you want to contact Contact me on Instagram on Hollywood Hills wife and on my iconic website. <laughs> yes, I will have all of. Yes, I will uh, have all of Perfect. So it was it was such a pleasure. You have always been a shining star in my eyes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you are the sweetest. No, I I just love you and thank you so much for taking time. I love to you <laughs> And all right, guys, thank you so much for listening and we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.